All right. So thank you, everybody, for joining us tonight for our Back to School with Brainy Camp, where uh, myself, Kara, and Ryan, we're going to be spending some time in the different grade bands and um, just show you how you can use some of the tools for some of the content that we uh, hope you are instructing on right now or will be in the in the near future so that when you leave you will have something that uh you can use right away because we know how important that is uh when you, you when you attend um, pd sessions so here we go all right ryan do you want to talk a little bit about this part yeah sure actually before i do that um someone mentioned when you try to change the names, it, you're not going to find Mark, Kara, Ryan. Just do host and panelists. If you need us on the on the backside, just do host and panelists, um, and we will see it. Not everybody else. I, th I thought we were all in there separately, but it's not. Um, so here's our agenda for tonight. We are going to do start with grade three through five. Um, I unfortunately, when I'm done, need to drop off right away, and then um, we're going to jump up to six eighth with Mark. And then Kara's going to finish us up with uh, K2. And we have a little bit of a survey. We need to ask a question of you guys, and we want your opinion on some stuff. And we so, do have, uh, oh, oh sorry. Ahead. And we let me just quickly, we do have, um, I put it in the chat. We have a link. To, we created a Google folder with some resources. I'm just going to quickly go there just so you can get a, a quick look at what's in there. Uh, we've got some some tutorial PDFs. And then we've also got this Word document, which is going to have all the share codes that we share with you tonight. I think Ryan's going to even share that uh, via the chat. So uh, yeah. my bad, Ryan. Um, let yeah. me stop sharing my screen and right. uh, I'll let you do your thing. All right. Hold on. I got to. Sorry. Right. Sending a message to someone real fast who asked a question. I just wanted to answer them. All right. So um, we are going to. Just jump right in. We are not going to spend too much time on how Braining Camp works. I may tell you a little bit about how I made a page or something like that, but we're not going to spend time doing all of that. Um, if you see on, on the page that Mark just shared with you, it does say that, um, there is a share code file that you can use. I'm going to put this in the chat too. And <clears throat> I'll show you real quick how share codes work. I'm going to do this first activity. I'm going to copy that code. And then I'm just going to paste it right in here at the top where it says share code. And then when I hit go, it's going to take me to that page. Anytime we do a share code, you can follow along. They'll put it in the chat and everything. You can do the activities along with us if you want to, you know, have a little bit of an experience doing it. If you want to just sit back and watch and come back and look at these Share codes later, you can, but this is where you're going to put them in, right there at that share code, and hit go. So the first activity that I want to share with you guys is one on place value. And you can see here that I have already gone into place value disks and set it up in the way that I need it to look. I'll share with you guys a couple of things that I did. The first thing, I, I wanted to do numbers. I just picked up to 100,000. So I can have a, a bunch on there. <clears throat> but normally place value disks have one through a million. <clears throat> Down here in our settings, I chose to do 100,000. You can choose to do 10,000, 1,000. You can change the page however you want. But I chose to do 10,000. I also um, chose one of our newest tools here. It is called a random number generator. And I pulled that out and set that here. And then when I clicked on it, I can set my maximum and my minimums. So because I'm working with numbers, I want kids to build numbers between 100,000 and up to a million. I set my max or my minimum at 100,000 and my maximum 999,000. Okay, so <clears throat> you give the kids the codes. What they would do is come in here, click on this purple um, number generator and then randomize it, spin it. And here's the number they have to choose, or you know, they can spin it again, and we'll use this number here. So we have 958,138. <clears throat> the kids can then come in here and drag pieces one at a time if they want, 
or they can click and see that I have eight ones, three tens, 100, eight thousands, five ten thousands, and nine, it's a good random number, nine hundred thousands. The other thing that I did was down here at this bottom, I left this on because I wanted kids to see that if this number matches this number up here, that they have been, they have built 958,138 and they're correct. Um, you can turn that off You see how it turns blue when I hover over it, click on it, turn it off and they don't have to see that at all. So it's up to you how you wanna do that. But again, I chose to do that, to have it on so kids can see that. I wanna share with you too, if you wanted to take this code and I'm just going to reset it. And we're gonna go back to the, the very, very beginning. Maybe your numbers don't go up to 100,000. Maybe you only do numbers that go up to 100. So I'm gonna change it to 100. I'm gonna click on my random number generator and I can't have the 100,000s up there anymore. So I'm going to set my minimum to 100 and I'm going to set my maximum to 999. And now that I have this new page, I can hit share. I can hit share code and create a brand new share code for the same activity, except for numbers up to 100. I'm gonna put that in the chat if you want it. There you go, you can copy that and now you have it already set for you. Just wanted to show you how easy it is to make a change to a previously made page. Um, another thing you can do here is, let me spin a number and get a random number here. I wanna get one with a couple ones in it, or at least, yep. All right, so we have nine, I have three tens, and I have four hundred. I'm gonna also click on the place value chart, and I'm gonna use my little handlebars here to drag this down to give myself a little more space. And then I'm going to recenter it using this little centering button right here. I know that a lot of times when you're talking about place value, yes, we want the kids to see that there's 439, but we also want to see how 439 can be made. So we can say that there are 400s, two tens, and 19 ones, right? And we do this all the time. We, we play around with how many tens we have and how many ones we have. Um, I can group these again as a group of 10 and bring them back into the tens and it'll make it a 10 again. I can bring a hundred over. And actually let's bring all of them over, bring them over separately here. So we can look at this and say, hey, we have 43 tens and nine ones, right? So we can start building that understanding of numbers by having this place value chart up here. The other thing I wanted you to notice is when this number is on, even though I've moved those pieces around, it's still saying I have 439. Again, if I wanted to bring some over, I'll bring these over and it'll grab 10 and return the rest. So then I can actually show it because I always wanted my kids doing it in the least number possible. Oh, that just missed. There we go, those should have come back. So now we can have them say that there's 400s, three tens and nine ones. And that's the least number that you can make it. Okay, I'm gonna go back to Brainy Camp. I am going to scroll down on my PDF there and pick up the next code. This is one on multiplication. And I'm gonna go into my share code, hit paste, and then click go and I will have this one. Now, this one is just some basic multiplication facts. I know a lot of third, fourth, fifth grade teachers start the year with uh, basic multiplication facts. I actually wanna show you three different ideas separately. I would not do these all at the same time, but they are three concepts in multiplication that your kids need to know. And I wanna show you some, some ways that you can do that. The first one is building arrays. And what I did was I came up here to my tools button and I grabbed this 
particular array frame, this one that has a little arrow pointing down. The reason I chose that one is when it's on the screen, I can adjust this to be any size that I want it to. So for this activity, um, I chose four times nine. How do you share the code so kids can get it? Give them the code, they have the same button, type it in and they can go. So yeah, so if this is an activity you wanna do with your kids, just give them that code that Kara just put in the chat, say type that in, hit go, and they will have the same exact page. So I have four times nine, and I am going to just do the first row. That's one row of nine. And you can see, I also have my, I turned my labels on down here to workspace because I wanted to see the count that was happening. So the first thing, okay, one group of nine. Then I'm going to copy these with the green copy button. And you can see now I have 18. Two rows or two groups of nine is 18. Three groups is 27. And four groups is 36. Really nice, easy way for your kids to be able to show you know, multiplication as an array. If you didn't want to do the copy and paste like I just did there, you can just click, 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 you know, click a 36 times and it will automatically fill in that tens or that array frame for you. So you may have some kids that need to do that. Moving on to the next one, community of the property. So there's the community of property there. We should say that four times nine is the same thing as nine times four. To do this, to show this, I could build another array that is nine times four and drag it out that way, or I can take this and just copy it. And when I copy it and bring it over to this side, and then click on the array frame itself, I have an option here to flip it. So now when I flip that, I can show them that nine times four and four times nine are the same thing. But if you look at my counter, it says 72. I can also select all the tiles. Oh, I grabbed too much. Grab just the tiles. And one of the options here is that I can toggle the color. So I'll make these pink. And now we can see that nine times four is the same thing as four times nine. We both have 36. Right, so they can, a nice easy way to show community property. It really is just is we're turning the array. It's the same exact thing. It's maybe just, you know, which way you're looking at it. All right, I'm going to get rid of this last, this one here. Come back up for the last part of multiplication, which is distributive property. I'm going to turn off my labels because I don't want four times nine on there. I want kids to think about ways that they can break apart the nine. I'm actually gonna use my pen tool and make it a little bit bigger and say, this is four and I can break nine a whole bunch of different ways. I'm gonna choose this time to do it by five, well, that's a bad five, plus four. And we can say, I know that five times four is 20, and I know that four times four is 16. To show that, again, go in here, change the color, and now we can see that we have 20 and 16. If you didn't want this on, if you don't want the kids to see that, turn that off, and then they can use the text tool, they can use the pen, and they can say that this is 20. And if they wanted to be real super creative, change the color and say that this is 16, right? And that way they can see, you know, they can break up one of the factors into something that's a little bit easier for them. I want to show you one other way to do it. I'm going to erase my things here. I could also, it doesn't always have to be addition, right? I could also do 10 minus 1 and four over here. To show that, again, you click on the, the array and I can add a 10th row. And now I can show them that, hey, this is, oh wait, I don't wanna do that. 
I'm going to make this all blue. There, we can show that, hey, if I know four times 10 is 40, I'm just taking away one group and now I have 36. All right. Any questions, anything, any comments you want to make real fast before I, I'll get the next code ready? And we'll move on to the, the next one that I have for you, which is going to be rounding. Just taking a second to look, see if anybody wants to comment on it. Okay. So we'll move on to the last one that I'm going to share, which is rounding whole numbers and decimals. Again, you have this code. We're going to go back to Brainy Camp, enter in the code here, and I will put that in the chat as well if you want this one. So you, you can copy that right out of the chat and put it in there. This time, I'm using one of my favorite tools that we have on Brainy Camp, which is the hundreds board. And one of the work mats in hundreds board is for rounding, right, or the workspaces. So what I did here was I came down to workspaces and changed it to rounding. And what you end up getting is like a curved or a, a bent piece of paper. I like to use the analogy that you're in a, you're a drone flying over the rooftop. And this peak right down the middle is the, the peak of the roof. And these blue numbers here are the gutters, okay? So this activity, what I want them to do is round to the nearest 10, drop a ring on the number. So drop a ring on 45, and then move the number to the correct bin. I use the shape tools to create a rounding down bin and a rounding up bin. So the kids will real simply just take 45, drop the ring, and they can see that it rounds up. So then they would take the 45 and put that in the round up group. They can do that for all the numbers. They can do it in order. They can do it however they want. Um, we'll do 37. And then what I really want the kids to see is what do these numbers have in common or, or what are we noticing about these numbers? And what they should see and what I hope they see with this is that the numbers that end up in the round up end in five, six, seven, eight, or nine. The numbers that end in one, two, three, or four, they round down, right? And this is just a nice, easy visual for them, right? So we have all fours, threes here. We have five, six, sevens in the other one. I'm going to reset the page because, again, this is what you're going to get when you enter in that share code. If you wanted to move these numbers over here, move the rings, add another set of six or eight or however many numbers you want. Another thing you could do is take out that random number generator, set it for one, well, defaults one to 99, which is great. And then I can actually, let me get rid of these, right? Cause maybe I'll change the directions to say, spin the number generator, 77, then use the rings. And that rounds up, so I would put 77 in the round up one. Somebody I just saw made a comment. Is there one for decimals? Yes. You can come down here to your options, and we have round to the nearest 100, round to the nearest 10, round to the nearest 1, the 1 tenth, and 100. Now, if you are going to do this with the random number generator, um, we do not have the ability right now to turn on decimals. So what I would do, and this is just me personally doing this, um, you can choose to do it differently if you want. I would choose a pen, and then I would come over here and put a zero in front. And same thing, now I have it in decimals, right? And we can say zero and 77 hundredths. It, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if we're doing decimals or whole numbers, rounding is going to be rounding. And these kids can do the same activity by spinning it, dropping a circle on, and then putting the number in the right box, rounding up or rounding down. All right, any questions there? Anybody wanna 
comment on any of the three that I did? Oh, Amy, um, you are trying to type in BTS 2023 in the share code. If you are trying to redeem um, that code, click on click here on redeem. Enter that code there. This is for this does need eight letters and numbers. It is strictly for the share codes to take you to a page. That one is to give you access to Brainy Camp. Did you create the boxes there in your workspace? Um, they are. I actually I created those. Well, no, I <clears throat> answer you better here. They are actually right over here in this little box with a T in it because this is our text and our shapes box. So I just dragged dragged the square out, made it the size that I needed, and then grabbed the text and said round up and move that into that column. And then you can play around with colors and all that stuff if you if you wanted to do that. Um, but yeah, that they're already they're already in there. All right, I am going to stop sharing and hand it over to I believe Mark. You're next. Yes, and I saw. Thank you, thank you, Ryan. Um, I saw a question, a, a quick question in the chat about a division sign. Um, you can use your keyboard controls uh, for a division sign. Currently, we don't have the ability to um, to enter. It's not part of our text tool currently, but there is. Um, I'm on a Mac, and I think it's Option and the slash key. So, um, depending on. Um, what kind of machine you have that'll that'll help you out there all right let's go to um grade six eight you know to take a quick look at um i think one of the topics that are probably most difficult for um for middle schoolers is uh ratio and proportions so i'm going to start out with um just a sample um code and i'll put this in the uh, chat it's just a quick sample and as I share this, this is a um, quick, um, we'll call it maybe a task um, on ratios. And you have this group of, um, you have a group of color tiles and they're called them widgets, right? For lack of a better term. And the, the task is to remove widgets so that for every three red and that, whoops, every three, whoop, Oh, I know why it's doing that. I have to turn my fill off. All right. For every three red, I have one blue and one green. And I could go in there and I could start moving those around to figure out, well, which ones I have to remove in order for um, that ratio to achieve that ratio that for every three red, there's one blue and one green. A decent, a decent activity, a decent approach. But I really wanted tonight, I really wanted to take a look at another tool that we could use for ratios because this, in my mind, let me put that back in there. Oh, I'm going to start my, I'm going to start my timer because that, to me, it's a little bit of a counting model for, for ratios and proportions. And I want kids, as they're working with ratios and proportions, to start thinking multiplicatively. So we are going to take a look at Cuisinaire rods. I don't know if Annalise Record is on tonight, but I know Cuisinaire rods uh, are one of her favorite manipulatives. And one of the things that I will say about Cuisinaire rods, you know, beyond their versatility, is that Cuisinaire rods are not necessarily about the numbers associated with them, but it's more about the relationships that exist between the Cuisinaire rods. Now, if you're not familiar with Cuisinaire rods, you have to get in there and you have to play around with them a little bit, just like you would expect um, your kids to do. You would give them some play time within their Cuisinaire rods uh, to, to discover and make some, um, make some discoveries about the Cuisinaire rods. So one of the things I'm going to pull them now, I've, 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 um, I've chosen from my settings that they come out of the bin or they appear in the bin vertically versus horizontally. And there's a reason, right? Because one of the things, the best way to really start to develop that relationship 
that exists between the rods is to create this staircase, often referred to as as a as the staircase. Whoops, there's that orange one. There it is. And as you might know, um, our virtual Cuisinaire rods have a an adjustable rod, but I'm not going to use that right now. You can see it adjusts to any particular size, giving you many more relationships that you can um, experience and, and explore. So one of the things, like I said, with Cuisinaire rods, you really need to spend some time getting the relationship between the rods. So for instance, I might ask kids, hey, give them some time. They might build this staircase. What do you notice about this staircase? Oh, look, I the difference between each step is one unit if this white rod is one unit. And that certainly could be a way for that to, to help develop that relationship between the rods. I will say, if you're going to do any work with Cuisinaire rods, it's so important that you have understanding of those relationships first, because otherwise it's just, you're not really using them to their full potential, right? You could build other trains where there's each step is the length of a two rod or a red rod. You could have them where each step is a three rod or a green rod, right? So again, have to have that time to um, to, to to explore and, and, and get that relationship between the rods. Now I'm going to switch. I gave you the share code. Now I'm going to switch and, and to help build some of those relationships that exist between the Cuisinaire rods. If you're in this code, you can um, click on workspace and go to letters because I wanted to give you some ways that you might introduce some for yourself or for your kids is to look at that, what I'm going to say is a study of relationships between between the, the Cuisinaire rods. Just a couple of tasks that, you know, to help build those relationships uh, between the rods. Find a rod that is three times as big as the green rod in here, and I can do it. Um, I can do it virtually or concretely, and then I can do it here symbolically because now each of the rods has a letter associated with its color. Or I can find a rod which is as many green as the purple rod is of the red rod. Again, helping, I wanted to give you some ways to um, help you develop that relationship between the Cuisinaire rods. All right, ratio and proportions, right? Ratios, that comparison of, of two different quantities. So I wanna take a look at uh, something I created to help you. Oops, let me put that in the in the chat to help to to, to get um, kids and yourself maybe thinking about um, ratios. And for me, it's it's about that that language, that ratio language. When we say, "Oh, what is the what does the ratio of two to three mean?" Right? It means that for every two parts of something there's three of the other thing. And that's why I like using the rods because if I look here at this question, how am I gonna represent the ratio of two to three? Okay, well, I'm gonna take this light green one. And again, I, I've, I've studied the rods. I know a little bit about the relationships here. So there's two rods. And this is where knowing the relationships between the rods helps me decide which ones I, I might choose to represent this ratio of two to three. Uh, so let's see. I take the red, I'm gonna place it underneath. So now I've got that, oh, this, this is a, a, a picture of that relationship that for every two green, there are how many red? Well, I'm gonna fill in my ratio table. There's two green and three red. Now I talked about thinking multiplicatively. Well, what about if I have four green? How many red? Again, I can just copy these. I'm gonna bring them over here. Oh, I can see now that I have six. Now here comes 
the I'm going to say the the power of of the ratio table. Let, let's do one more. Let's do one more. Uh, let's see. I'm going to I'm going to move all this over here just a bit, and I'm going to take all these here. I'll just copy it just for um, for 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 time. So now, what do I have here? How many green? Got. If I'm counting correctly, six green, and I've got three, six, nine. Now, to me, here's the power of the ratio table and, and helping to think multiplicatively, as well as being a, a, a computational tool, right? What if I wanted to know how many, if there were 12 green, whatever green might represent in this case, I know we're, we're talking, but we're, we, we we haven't given any context, but I'll share some of those with, with you. How many red might I have? Well, what do I know about the, the data I've already entered in this? Well, six times two will give me 12. So oops, there's 12 there. And so this must be 18. Or if I was looking for, if there's 10, green rods, well, six and four is 10. I can add these two. And so I can add these two as well. Oops, I don't have a spot in my ratio table for that. But again, seeing the power of that ratio table and as a way to, as, as I'm going to say, as a computation tool to, to reinforce some of those, um, some of those, strategies that they've learned in, in elementary grades. All right, let's take a look at another one. I believe this one is on equivalent ratios and I'm keeping an eye on my time here. All right, ratio of green to red. Let's take a look at how this might, we might get this multiplicative reasoning, right? And and the um, the the language of, of what ratios mean. I'm gonna, I'm gonna use this cover tool. Um, so here we go. This is two to three. And I created, all I did here to get these is I, I knew that these two greens were equal to two light greens, right? So all I did, I turned the fill off and made it a bar model and put it down here, okay? So now the kids can start to fill that in to build those equivalent ratios, filling out their ratio table, and looking at that, looking at the concrete or the pictor, the, the, the visual here, and using that ratio table um, to help them generate those equivalent ratios and identify those equivalent, those equivalent ratios. So let's see. Um, one more here. So here's one with some context. Again, uh, for every three red corn snakes, I, I, I tried to get the context to fit the color of the rods. Uh, there are three green lizards. Let's say this is a zoo or a pet store, right? Using these relationships, building those different equivalent ratios to identify those missing elements. So if I know that there's a ratio of three to two, well, if there's six red corn snakes, how many green lizards will there be, there be and so forth? If there's, let's see, how many corn snakes do we have here? Is that 15? I did my math correct, right? Now, I, they can fill in this template to start to think about generating that equivalent ratio and, and solving uh, that problem there. Now, my, uh, oh, here, and here's one more for you. I, I, I'm trying not to make this a, a webinar just on Cuisinair rods. Um, here's a quick problem. Trail makes recipe calls for a cup of raisins and three cups of peanuts. We can use the rods to model that, uh, that relationship. And then, of course, now in seventh grade, we get to unit rates. 
I'm sorry, I realize I'm not putting these in the chat. <laughs> I'm watching my time. I hope I'm not going too fast. This is one that my colleague Kara and I worked on a couple weeks ago for the recipe for punch with apple juice, concentrate, and four bottles of lemon lime, lemon lime soda. Um, so um, how can we look at developing that that relationship using the rods. Well, I'm going to use red for apple juice, every two cans of apple juice. And there's four bottles. Oh, there's my timer. All right. Um, so there's a, there's a visual of my, um, of my relationship, but then how do I get, think about grade seven? How do I get that unit rate? Well, I might think about some of those strategies, right? I could half this and that could give me my unit rate now that there's one can of apple juice per two, uh, what is it? Two bottles uh, of lemon lime. Now um, I'm out of time, but there are other share codes for grade seven. Well, that was great. That same problem with the, with the, uh, with the, uh, with the punch is done in the coordinate plane, same problem. And then there is also one, um, a grade eight. I'm gonna copy that and just quickly show you because it's in the coordinate plane. It's all about understanding how, a um, little bit about slope and what does slope mean. And this, this one here, this last one, WG, um, if you go, it's one of our tasks that we have. And the teacher note for that uh, task is uh, right here in that in that Google folder for you. So um, I apologize for going so fast, but I wanted to give the star of the show here, uh, Kara, I wanted to give her adequate time to do her thing because I love watching Kara and listening to Kara because I always so learn something. I do from I do from Ryan as well. But um, <laughs> I'll stop now, Kara, so you can do your thing. Thank you. Well, thank you, Mark. Um, just to clarify really quick, the um, the code said redeem by September 1st. We we mean, it, I think it was November 1st, if I'm correct, right, Mark? I think it was. Yes, it has to be that redeemed was just by a, November 1st. November 1st. So just ignore the September 1st date. Um, you need to just redeem that code by November 1st, and then you get everything will be um, perfect and fine, and you will be in and ready to go. So we're going to kind of shift gears and we're going to shift to K2 now. We have saw Ryan do some great three through five stuff and Mark, it, oops, my thing is way off here. Um, Mark showed us some really interesting, great, wonderful things, six through eight. He always just knows how to explain things in ways. Why is this not letting me grab to make it smaller? Okay. Can y'all see it okay? If you can't, just put it in the chat and then I'll kind of play with it a little bit more. Um, let me make sure it's at 100, yep, yeah. okay. So we're gonna kind of talk a little bit today about little K through two stuff. We're, we're getting towards the end of our session here and, and I just wanted to give you some ideas that you could do at the beginning of the year. One of the things that we always talk about in K2 is number of the day activities and um, we, we use them a lot. And there are some really great ones. If you go to Twitter, I know that a couple of people have posted some share codes about number of the day. Um, ones that can be used to share and, and share codes. And that's the one thing I love about the share codes is that you can use them um, all over, right? So we could share all across one share code and everybody can have access to it. And it's a wonderful thing. Um, we know that using these number of the day activities is super important because we know that it's more about learning about that number of the day, but taking that knowledge that we do um, with all of the things, composing, decomposing, um, looking at it. We're gonna go ahead, I'm gonna put it in here. So, you know, this is just made with two color counters. And the reason I wanted to show you two color counters is we all, we do this with color tiles and we've done it with um, linking cubes and there's so many other ways to do it. But you can, I wanted to tell you in the two color counters, you can change the color, which is something that not a whole lot of people um, know or, or recognize. And I love that you can change the colors because it does kind of change it up a little bit. 
Um, so the number of the day here, this is that random number generator that you've already seen. I set this to zero to 20 because zero is a number that we need to talk about sometimes. And so if that pops up, we need to be able to talk, you know, how would this look? Where would this go? Why isn't it on the number path, but it's on the number line? And those conversations are really important. So um, I did set it zero to 20 but you can just click to randomize and now it says 12. So here I'm gonna model 12. I'm gonna pick 10 as a teacher that are going to be one color. Oops, and then I actually picked too many because I wanna change these to a different color. So I'm just gonna invert them and um, change it to the, to the other. And so the students can practice counting, but they can kind of see that there are 12 things there. Now I can talk about what does this look on like a 10 frame? So again, I'm gonna, you know, quickly, I can put these here and then, you know, put the other two in my 10 frame. If you haven't been aware, we do have the number path. It's one of our newer, um, I locked it so that, you know, the kids won't play with it, but it is one of our newer additions. You can model and show these benchmarks of fives, which is super, super important, especially for our younger babies. If you don't know, number paths are actually supposed to be used K and one before you ever introduce number lines and number lines really aren't even supposed to be used till second grade. Um, but I know that, you know, you might want to show it, you might want to model on both just to get that, that understanding even deeper. But here you can, I'm going to actually lay, send this to the back because I want these to go on top. So I'm going to have 10 and two more. And all I did was layer that. So that's a layering feature that we have. Again, I'm marking this number on the number line. I could put it here, but I also could just say, you know, I just want you to show me on the number line where that number is. And so I could, could do something like that. I didn't put it between the numbers. I put it right on that line. And then it says decompose the number in one way and write an equation to match. Your kids could compose this, decompose this any way. And you'll probably want to have conversations about all the different ways to decompose that number um, and have kids kind of throw it out there. But again, it is um, just so that you understand that you can, like, can put them all together. I'm going to pick up my pen here and just pick. I'm going to say that six and six is one way to decompose. And another thing I wanted you to notice is that I have this written, this equation written both ways. And this is really just to get the kids to understand what the equal sign means. We can have conversations about that. This, you know, we, so often they, they have the trickiness of, of knowing that the, the, um, the pro or the answer, the product, the sum, the difference is on one side and then the equations on the expressions on the other. So just kind of be aware that these number of the day activities are really important, but we can add so much to this. So you can take this share code and you can add, let's find the double. Let's do tally marks. Let's draw a base 10 representation. You can use the, the pen tool to do that. We can skip count to this number. Like the possibilities of the conversations that can come out of this are endless. Um, so, you know, I kind of gave you a basic skeleton, but feel free to take what I have create something different, add to it what maybe you want to focus on that week. And then you click share and share code. And the new share code will just, um, the new share code then just goes like, you can use that share code and it becomes yours and you can use it however you like. Now, Ryan showed you that if I just refresh this, I can start over. So all I have to do is go back to the beginning. Wow, this one showed me zero. So we can, again, have that conversation about that zero and what that looks like. So that's just one example of something that I wanted to show you today. Um, the next one I kind of want to talk about is comparing numbers. You know, I think we're, we're doing a lot of comparing numbers. We see a lot of, we want to make sure we um, look at the number of digits. And then we kind of want to look at, you know, what those values and those digits mean. And um, we kind of discussed 
all the wonderful things. We do have this wonderful comparing mat in our place value, our base 10 blocks, I'm sorry, place base 10 blocks. So you can see that if I have 34 is less than, I mean, 30 is less than 34. And so you can turn these off. Um, but I wanted to show you comparing on a wreck and wreck because that's something that we don't so often think of a wreck and wreck as, as a good comparing tool. When you bring out the wreck and wreck, be sure you subitize. Be sure you're talking about benchmarks of five and 10. But then you also want to show that, that you can compare numbers with them as well. So if I come back into Braining Camp and I put my share code, and now I can compare these two numbers. So here, I'm looking here and I'm gonna just, again, press, I have my little randomizer. And now I have seven and, and 13. So here I wanna say, I'm gonna bring over five without counting each one. So that's one thing that you want to make sure that you're doing is you know using those benchmarks. So five, six, seven, and then 13, I can take over 10 and three more. So they should be able to see five and 10 very quickly without counting each one. That's kind of the goal that you're getting to. So now I can use this. I can say, I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger, seven is less than 13. And again, these are just templates. All you have to do is refresh. You could do these over and over again until um, students maybe can come up and show an example. There's just, the options are endless. So the last thing I wanna show you is this the um, subtraction direct modeling. And we're gonna, I'm gonna go very quickly because we do have something to show you at the end. So if I copy and I come here and I press paste. Okay, so let's talk about subtraction for a second. It's one of our bigger ones, right? There are 264 bees in a hive. I like to always have some kind of context with it, even if it's just a problem. Standard algorithm is not even supposed to be done until I think like fourth grade, but I always like to have it on the side. I do want my students seeing me do it, even with what's happening here. So if I have 264, 47 flew away. So I know that I need to first take away seven. Can I take away seven? No, not with what I, I can't take away from those four. So I'm gonna have to regroup this. We have this awesome regroup feature. And now I can, I'm gonna draw a line here just for, you know, kind of so the students can kind of see what I'm taking away. And I'm gonna take away six and seven. And all I did was have to regroup one of those. Now I'm gonna show this over here. I'm gonna say, okay, what I did there was I took a 10, now I have five, and then I had 14 ones, and then I took away seven and I have seven left over. So now I have five and I need to take away seven tens. I can't take away seven tens. So I'm going to grab this and regroup it into tens. And again, I'm gonna take away Here's this five. And the reason I'm gonna put, I'm putting it together and I'm gonna show you in just a second, five, six, seven. So now I'm gonna put these together. Oops, covered it up. Covered it up again. So now I can say now I, what I did here was I regrouped that hundred, I have 100 left over and I had 15 tens this time. 15 tens take away seven tens and I get six left. One, two, three, four, five, six, I'm sorry, eight left. And then I have one. Okay, so I have 100. What I can do here is when I put down my pen, I can turn on my labels. And when I turn on my labels, if when they're together, you can see that separately they don't 
they're, you know, they just label each one. But then when I put them together, I can see the expanded form of that number 187 is what I have left after I took this 77 away.